God glory. I just want to encourage you. Maybe you were here the past couple weeks. We were sitting in the Lord's living room. That was awesome. But we're about to get crazy this morning. We're going to give God glory. I want you to move your feet, clap your hands, and we're going to give God praise today. Amen. Are y'all ready to worship? Are y'all ready to worship? Come on. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. I'm marching to battle, no doubt in my mind that my God is with me and victory is mine. I'll dance in the shadow of my enemy because God is champion and he fights for me oh god is my champion and he fights for me hey bigger the battle greater my faith there is no giant you cannot say All my words fall short. All my 
1 Corinthians 2, 2, 2, 1 through 5 says, When I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words or impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. And I came to you in weakness, timid and trembling. And my message and my preaching were very plain. Rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, I relied on the power of the Holy Spirit. And I did this so you would trust not in human wisdom, but in the power of God. And what that scripture means to me is, a lot of us, we, we've come in here today with, with pain, and with frustration and with hurt. You know, maybe we don't agree with somebody. Maybe we look different than somebody. Maybe somebody in this room has hurt you, but all of those things and more, they have, to, they have to bow down in the presence of Jesus. And we are in the presence of Jesus this morning. And today, all that we need to remember is who he is and what he did. Because I'm really sure when we get to heaven, we're not gonna talk about how that person voted or that person that hurt you. We're gonna talk about Jesus and how good he is, how awesome he is, and that he sent his son to die for us, that God sent his son Jesus to die for us. And Lord, I thank you for that. Would you put your hands out with me today and thank the Lord this morning. God, we thank you. Lord, that you did what only you can do. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, God, for all you are. So holy, so awesome, Jesus. So wonderful in all your ways, God. Oh, we thank you, Jesus that you died for us and you came back to life. So we worship you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the wages of my sin was death. And you knew I couldn't pay the debt. But you paid it with your final breath. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And you took the wrath that I deserved. Thank you, Jesus. And your holy blood broke every curse. We believe it. And your mercy had the final word. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We sing Christ and Christ crucified in you. We raise from death to
to the lamb that was slain. We thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you that you came, Lord. We thank you that you came and you made a way, God. You changed everything for us, Jesus. You died on the cross, Lord, but you rose again. And you are in heaven, God, reigning on your throne. You are alive and well, Jesus. Oh, and death couldn't hold you down in hell. It couldn't steal the crown of heaven. Yeah. Come on and sing it out in bed. All the earth cry out and lift up a whole. You didn't stay on the cross, but you rose again victorious for us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, church, good morning. It's so good to see you. We're going to ask you to just go ahead, grab a seat right where you're at. We're going to bring the lights up. I was going to say it's really good to see you, but I couldn't see you until the lights came up. But now I can be honest and say it's really good to see you. So, hey, if it's maybe your first time, second time to Church on Fire and you're new here, I just want to give you a special welcome and say welcome to Church on Fire. Church, can we welcome all the guests who, who are in the room with us today? Yeah, and so, hey, it, we are honored that you chose to spend part of your weekend with us. And so if that's you, if you're newer here to Church on Fire, we just want to ask you to text the word guest to the number that's on the screen. It's 513 268 Five, six. All right, we're not going to steal all your information. It's nothing too invasive. We just want to get to know you and tell you how you can get plugged in to Church on Fire. So, hey, if you're a guest, church, once again, let's give it up for all the guests that are here. Yeah. And so, hey, church, I just want to say real quick, thank you for your giving, okay? If you've ever given anything to Church on Fire, thank you so, so much. Um, you know, it takes resources to do a lot of the stuff that we do here, right? There's hundreds of families every single week getting uh, free food from the farmer's market. We just had our back to school outreach highlighter. We got youth groups, young adult, children's in the back. Like we have all these incredible things that are going on and it's all because of your giving. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And man, if you don't know how to give, maybe you, you wanna get involved. They're, again, they're on the screen, but uh, you can use the Push Pay app. That's what I use. I think it's, it's pretty easy. Um, you can go to mycfm.info or you can do it the, the old school way, right? We have offering boxes along the back wall where you can drop your offering in, in the envelope in the seat in front of you. And so uh, church, thank you for your giving. And so, hey, in a, in a couple weeks, we got a party coming up at Church on Fire. Now you might be, what kind of party? Where is Baptism Sunday coming up? Yeah, on August 28th, right? And so 
Some people are clapping, some people are whistling, shouting. If you don't know why they are, make sure you're here at Baptism Sunday. It is a party. We are celebrating the new life inside people. And so at Church on Fire, we say baptism is the outward sign of an inward work of God in our lives. Pastor Doug has also said it's the wedding ring of salvation, right? Um, And so it's basically saying, man, God has done something in me. And so I'm going to commit my life to him. Here's my declaration to following him. And so if that's you, if you're interested, God's been doing something in your life and you're interested in baptism, sign up at mycfm.info. Okay, do it right now. You can be on your phone. We're not We're not gonna tell you to get off your phone. Sign up right now, all right, mycfm.info. And if you know somebody, you think, man, God's been doing something in their life and you think it would be beneficial for them, why don't you invite them to come get baptized August 28th, all right? And the last thing I'm gonna say to you guys and then we'll we'll greet each other is also coming up in, in a few weeks is our fall group launch. Okay. Yeah. Again, some people are yelling about groups. If you're, if you're not excited about groups, it's probably because you've never been in a group, right? Groups are absolutely incredible. We say at Church on Fire as well that circles are better than rows, right? This is where relationships happen. This is where life change happens. And so, hey, if you are interested in leading a group, go ahead, sign up at mycfm.info. Okay. That's where we're going to push you again. Mycfm.info. Go ahead. If you're interested in leading a group and maybe You've had the thought, man, maybe I could lead a group, but I don't know what I'm doing. If that's you, we're gonna help you out, okay? We're not, you're not gonna be on the journey all by yourself. We wanna help you and give you the tools to lead a group. And so August 28th, after the second service, immediately following second service, we have a group leader training, okay? And so if you have any questions, if you're not 100% sure if you wanna lead a group, if you think maybe you want to, but you're just not there yet, go to the training, we'll answer any questions you have, equip you with everything that you need, and the best part of all, there will be free food, okay? You can't beat that, we will feed you. And so, hey, we're so excited about everything coming up, but now's the time, I'm gonna invite you, go ahead, stand up, we're gonna greet each other, give somebody a handshake of high five, Uh, Hello, go ahead and greet each other. everybody. Good morning, everybody joining us online. We're so glad you're here. Thanks for being here. Awesome. Everybody in the room, let's welcome everybody online with a big shout. Ready? One, two, three. Glad you're here. All right. We're in a series. We're not in a series. This is a standalone sermon we do every year when students start going back to school. It's called The Blessing. So our Indiana students have went back. A lot of our Ohio start this week. Something that's really cool, tomorrow morning, Monday, August 15th, we start a school here called Spark Academy. It's an acting academy. The person who's starting it is, was teacher of the year of Southwest Local. That's a big deal. So um, too late to sign up. Next year, we're just believing for growth because um, we we love our kids and we want to offer them uh, an excellent education. Southwest does in East Central and Oak Hills. They offer excellent education. Sometimes there's 
things that are taught that we don't agree with, right? Amen? Amen. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, August 28th, night of worship here. It's at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. So, anybody online, come join us. Yeah. Last one was incredible. And then September 9th through the 10th, we have a women's conference called Loved, Forgiven, Righteous. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Guys can't come. We'll be babysitting or something. I'll be deer hunting. Um, something. Anyway, ladies, sign up. We just finished a, a few a month ago our small groups, and there were six of them called Father's House. How many women were in Father's House? Absolutely incredible. So um, this is the this is part of it. So okay, all right. So let's pray. Ask the Lord to be with us. Let's open our hearts. We have our kids in here today. There's a reason because we're doing the blessing. And so uh, stay with me. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for everybody who's joining us online. Thank you for everybody who's in the room. I pray that you bless this message and that we do what you said in James 1.21. We receive with meekness your engrafted word. We receive it even when it cuts and hurts and, and, and shows us things that we should change. We receive it. And then, uh, Psalm 119, 11, we make your word, uh, we hide your word in our heart so we will not sin against you. And then Psalm 119, 105, we make your word our, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. James 1, then we will be doers of your word and not hearers only. In Jesus' name, everybody who's ready to receive the word, say, I'm ready. Okay, I had to say it quick because you guys go, amen. And that's not what we were saying. All right, so. I've flown a whole lot. Matter of fact, a week from this Monday, I'll be flying somewhere. And uh, I mean, I've flown a lot. And so there's a thing that they do. Sometimes it's in video on the seat in front of you or a TV. Uh, A lot of times it's a lady or a man that get up and they say, hey, I'm your flight assistant today. And I want to give you some instruction. Number one buckle your seatbelt, here's how you do it. And right there I go, okay. <laughs> how many go, I, I don't need instructions on how to buckle a seatbelt, but put this in there and then tighten it up. Then they say, in the event that we lose oxygen in this plane, there's something that will drop from the ceiling. And they hold it up, and it looks like it cost $1.75. Have you guys seen that thing? That's going to make me live And they take a little rubber band on and they go like this and pretend. And they say, if we lose oxygen and that drops down and you have somebody you're helping, put the mask over yourself first, then help the person next to you. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't I put the mask on them and then put it on me? If I can get it on me and I can breathe, then I can help everybody else that's around me. I may put it on my child and pass out before I, you you know, I get it on me and my child can't put it on me. Does that make sense? It's important. Uh, You can't do for them what you can't do for yourself. Let me, let me put this on the screen right here. This is important, gang. Please grasp this. It's hard to bless others when you don't see yourself as blessed. How am I supposed to bless everybody else? I'm not blessed. Jesus was big on this. It's not a lot of places in the Bible where he blessed, but here's a big one in Mark 10. Let's look at Mark 10, 13. Track with me, everybody. Stay with me, everybody. One day, some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch them and bless them. I did that one time. There's a guy named Lester Summerall who traveled the world. He was, he was in his late 80s. I've read his life story over and over and over and over. He, he has a mercy ship that, that travels the world. He has a plane called Goliath where he feeds people. He's done so many things. I had lunch with him, and I said, hey, Dr. Summerall, will you bless my daughters? He said, sure, bring them over. And, and Lisa and Nikki didn't really know who he was, and they came over like, oh, whatever. You know, she'll tell me when we get home, I didn't do that. Yes, you did. Oh, whatever, he's this guy. So... He blessed them, put, her hand, put his hands on them and blessed them. And that was powerful for me. Two weeks later, he died. And I'm glad I took the opportunity. People brought 
their children to Jesus to bless them. You know what the disciples said in this passage? You guys get out of here. He doesn't have time to bless your children. And Jesus said, guys, let the children suffer the little children to come unto me for, for such is the kingdom of heaven. You got to be like a little child to enter the kingdom of heaven. It's faith. It's believing. He said, let them come to me. And then in verse 16, he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. How many in this room would love, I'm 65, to sit on Jesus' lap or to kneel before him and have him say, Doug, I bless you. How many think that would be like the highlight of, of your life, of ever, of everything? Of everything, it's, it'd be so powerful. But they tried to stop them. And, and I just want you to know, first of all, you, you have to, you have to see yourself as blessed. You have to see yourself as worthy. You have to see yourself as a person who has something in your life that, that, that there is to offer. Listen, I tell you this all the time, and I'm not lying. I, I was in trouble all the time in school. Anybody in here, anybody online, you guys online, put a little hand up. How many in here got in trouble all the time in school? I was always in trouble. Four of us, my people. I was playing basketball. The team above me, this is in school. I was playing basketball. The team above me lost. My team won. I, I, I wasn't up at the next level in school. We're on the bus coming home. I'm, I, I got my boys, and we're like, yeah, woo. I'm, I'm, we won, we won. And the other team lost. We got back. Coach says, I want to see you in my office, Combs. I'm like, okay, what? It's like, what were you doing cheering on the bus? I said, we won. But your other team, they lost. That's disrespectful to them. I said, but we won. We won. He said, you're never doing that again. All right. He said, bend over and touch your toes, Combs. I do it right now, but I can't. I'm close. You know what he did? He got a paddle out of the drawer and said, Pow! I'm jumping around. Anybody get a SWAT? Anybody in here besides the three of us? Anybody get a SWAT in school? I used to get SWATs. And they hurt because I was always in trouble. I couldn't focus. I had bad grades. So now I'm thinking, I, I'm, I'm a troubled person. There's no hope for me. You know, Combs, you never amount to nothing. You don't pay attention. And so... Then, I have a good friend, John, in here who really helps me. There's colors that you are. There's yellow, red, green, blue. Yellow is the otter, playful. I'm an Enneagram 7. If you've never taken that, I'm an Enneagram 7. And, and so this week, I'm reading up on what Enneagram 7s are. And I it got to the one point, and I said, they're always searching for new adventure. They're always on the run. They can't sit still. They're going, go, 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 go. I copied and pasted it, sent it to my wife. I said, does that sound like me? And she's like, thumbs up, exclamation point. Oh my gosh, yes, that's you, that's you. So I have to look at that and celebrate who I am. Not that I was a bad person. Look at how God made me and celebrate that. Our oldest daughter, Lisa, is red. She's in charge. This true story. She was two years old. She's sitting in the front seat. This is before car seats. I drive around. She'd be standing. I'm, I'm telling you. How many grew up laying in the back window of the car? Okay. Drank out of water hoses and jumped off of roofs. And she's sitting over there throwing a holy fit. And I had had, I like, you better stop it right now. Stop it. Ah! She's not here. We're going to talk about it. She's on vacation. Let's talk. She's like, ah! I promise I went, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind that spirit off of you. She's like, okay. <laughs> Preschool. The preschool teacher came to us and said, would you please tell Lisa that I'm the teacher, not her? But when you harness that, what, why you always, always got to be in charge? Why you always got to be first? Why you always got to lead? Why you always got to make all the decisions? Why you got to be like that? 
No, let's harness that. And then she becomes this powerful leader that does these things, right? Nikki is green, huggy. I want everybody happy. I want everybody to be happy. Karen's red. Rip your head off. That's my wife. But we harness that. Please listen. Look at somebody beside that you, right and left, and tell them you're special. Come on, tell them you're special. You're awesome. You, come on, tell them you have something powerful to offer. So when I started learning this, and I, I know this is a lot of repetition, but I want please, please grasp right now what I'm about to tell you. And my dad and mom, they were not bad, but they just didn't understand this. They didn't understand who I was and why I acted like this and why my sisters act the way they do, my brothers act the way they do. And I started learning this, like everybody's special. There's a downside to your gifting. And so I said, you know what? I, I want to start speaking into my children and into my grandchildren special things about them. So every Thanksgiving, if they're home or Christmas, whatever time we get to be together, every other year they, they go somewhere else. I have a stool that's about that big. It's made out of wood, and you can go like this, and it gets taller and shorter. And we eat dinner, and I go, guys, I'm, I'm just telling you, we're going in the living room. We're going in the living room. They know. I put music on, real soft music. And I say, okay, we're doing, we're doing this thing that we do every year. I tried to find a picture of it, but I couldn't find it. Okay, Carter, you're first. Sit in the, sit in the stool. And he sits in the middle of the room, music's playing, and we all start going. He's like, oh, my God. You do this, you say the same thing every time. <laughs> say the same thing every time. Like it's, a, all right, okay. Or well, we're going to say it again so you get it. Dude, you're organized. You're structured. You, you, you dude, you're good with finances and, 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 and just go over it. And, and now he's going, he starts melting. And then mom starts talking. She's crying. Now he's crying. Now boo's crying. Now somebody's, and we go, okay, get out. Uh, May May, your turn. May May, dude, you are not afraid to jump out of the boat. You are not afraid to, to launch out. And, you know, then we go to, we, we go to, I, I could go through all of them. Is it bad if I don't do the other three? Kel, you okay if I don't do the other three? Okay, okay. Kel. <laughs> he has this ability to talk to everybody and make them feel special. What's the dude? We were on vacation. This is when we first saw it. We were on vacation, and the neighbor's name was, what was his name? Ted? Ed? Kel's like four years old. He goes out of a cab, and we rented Ed's out inside, and he goes, Morning, Ed! <laughs> How's it going? You have your car? That's Kel, and he has this ability. He's a, he's a leader. Then Chico, the general, and Boo Bear's creative and just, and, and so we speak into them. They're crying, we're crying. It just builds you up when you have that. So we did it on a trip to Atlanta. We're on this trip and, and we, we debrief after uh, working all day on stuff and meeting with people and doing this stuff. And we got in this circle and I put music on. I'm like, I'm gonna do this. So I don't know, Bell kissed. Bell, wait, raise your hand. Everybody online can't see her. That's Bell kissed. So I'm gonna start with Bell. Like, Bell, I just want to tell you, and I'm telling you right now, Bell, you are the sweetest person. I don't think I've ever seen Bell have a bad day. She serves, she works hard, she is absolute. How many know Bell and agree that she is the sweetest, sweetest thing? I'm just telling you, you are a doll. I love you, Bell. I'm proud of you. Everybody's proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> then we, then, then, then I said, well, here we go. So we did a few more and we had three nights and we did three nights of it. And, and our children's pastor named it the circle of love. And it's kind of broken out in our student ministry circle of love. And they'll have a thing and they'll sit and tell each other how awesome they are. Because why? Because we are awesome. Do one more time. Look at somebody. Tell them you're awesome. 
You're awesome. All right. Okay. Why do we do it? Listen. Because words have power. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Your words have great power. Your words are, have power. They can set the course of a person's life. Please hear me. Some of you have words that have been spoken over you in your life, and you can still feel it. You can still hear them resonating in you. It's powerful. Your words have power. Be careful how you speak to people. Be careful. John May, uh, we go fishing every February. He'll tell you. People who hang with me will tell you. I'm telling you something. If you're my waitress or waiter, I'm telling you something good about you. <clears throat> I'm just going to do it. I go to Kroger. They have special needs people bagging, bagging the groceries. I go up to them. Man, man, dude, you're doing a good job. And they just smile like. One time I went up to a girl who wasn't prepared for me to walk up to her. I'm like, and then you're, you're doing a great job. She's like, ah. I'm like, you, you. I'm like, sorry, but you're doing awesome. They have power. Where, where, does a, where does a kid look when they're playing baseball and get on first base or they get up to bat? Where does a kid look uh, that's singing in the school choir. Where does a kid look when they're playing soccer? Where does a kid look when they're done cutting the grass? Where do they look? Huh? To the parents. They look to you to tell them. They, they look to you. So I've tried to do that with Lisa and Nikki. My goal in life with Lisa and Nikki was to embarrass the living daylights out of them. True, this is a true story. We, we, just, we just lived to them, embarrass them at school. Lisa, who's not here, who better be watching, was, on, was a, turning 16 at Harrison High School. Karen put, a, put curlers in her hair, a green mask on her face, one of those masks that you guys put on. They're scary. She put a bathrobe on had balloons and a lunch with slippers and went to the front desk and said, please call out to Lisa. Her mom is here with her lunch for her 16th birthday. Place got silent. <coughs> Lisa Combs, Lisa Combs, your mom is here to bring you your lunch, the whole place. Here she goes walking. <laughs> Happy birthday. And went out. I was building a house and I bought this nasty truck as a Dodge nasty rusted out just to haul stuff. I didn't hardly pay anything for it. You know what my daughter said? Don't ever pick us up from school in that thing. You know what I heard? Pick them up in it and embarrass them. Because we were in Georgia and we were at a wealthy school. Well, we weren't wealthy and I'm driving, a I'm like, okay. So I go one day as the kids get in their Beamers and their Corvettes, literally, and I pull up in a 1970 Dodge Ram extended cab, and I open the door, and I'm standing like on the rail, like where the door opens. I'm up high, and I'm going, I'm here! Ah, ah, ah. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh, Dad. I just love doing it. I still love doing it. I dropped Carter and Mason off one time. <laughs> I don't know if they remember that. I dropped them off and they're going running up to school. I roll my window down. Make sure you wash your hands after you go to the bathroom. <laughs> Who is that? We don't know. <laughs> Uber. Uber. But when when they would sing or Lisa and Nigga were both in and you're not supposed to make noise in there. You know, you're supposed to dress up and be quiet. Mm-mm, not me. Yeah. They walk out. Lisa Combs. Da, da, yeah. You rock, Nikki. You rock. Or choir concerts. They come walking out. Listen now. Yeah. You singing that. Yeah. That's my daughter. You know what other kids would say? Will you please have your dad yell for me? Will you have your dad yell for me? 
They want you to yell for them, not like I did, but they want you to yell. For, they want you to cheer them on, cheer them on. I'm here. Yeah. Proud of you. You're awesome. Cheer them on. So, bless, bless is to speak good or favor over them. Speak good or favor over them. Everyone's searching for a blessing. Point two, everyone's searching. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how old you are. How many in here want to hear people say good words to them? Okay. I don't know anyone who wouldn't. I will go home. Karen was at first service. I do this. Karen, how do you think church was today? Well, the music, well, this, I don't care. Tell me how my preaching was. How did I do? Did I do okay? Oh. You were so good. Oh my gosh, I'm proud of you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And I, I try to do that, you know, with people all the time. All right, so look. The parental blessing or the blessing. So when we finish this, we're going to have people up here. If you're alone and you want somebody to speak over you, we're going to make that happen. There's three girls at first service. They come up to me every single Sunday. Every Sunday they come to me. A lot of people come to me, but these three girls come to me every Sunday. And they just, they come, they want a hug. And my thing lately is, we don't need no bad boys in our life. You hear what I'm saying, girls? I'm like, uh-huh. Do you hear what I'm saying? You don't need no bad boys in your life, right? All parents, right? We don't want no bad boy. Bad boy, bad boy. What you gonna do? I tried to think of more, but I couldn't. So, I, I want you to take these notes. I want you to try this. I want you to try this. Okay? Six ways to bless your children. Set aside a time. So, Belle, just come up. We'll just use you as an example, okay? This little Belle kissed. Love Belle kissed. Now, you look at me. Come over here. So, set aside a time to bless them. And repent for any negative words. Look at me. You ever had negative words spoken over you? Does that happen quite a bit? Sometimes. Yeah. So I want to repent for negative words spoken over you. Okay? Put your hand on their head. I will use my left hand. I look in her eyes. Okay? Set aside a time. Repent for bad words. Put your hand on their head. Look in their eyes. Looking in the eyes is a hard part. And then speak blessing. I bless you, Bill. I want you to know that I'm proud of you because your apron is changing colors. It changed, didn't it? Did you get it? Her apron changed. We know what that means. Because you work hard. I'm proud of you and I bless you with energy to continue to work with kids like you do. It's awesome. I'm proud of you. You're a good girl. And someday, some handsome dude's coming along. And he's going to realize how awesome you are. Right? Yeah. So I bless you. You have a bright future. And you're a good girl. Everybody thinks Belle's a good girl. Give her a good round of applause. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then speak to their destiny. Speak to their destiny. You hear what I'm saying? Speak to their destiny. I could see now, I can see now in, in kids, I can see it. Like this is what you're gifted at. I can see it and I speak to that. So here's what we're going to do. We have a little video. I think this is cool. I want you to watch this video and then I'll be back in a little bit. My name is Matt Clark, and I'm the high school pastor here at Church on Fire. Um, but before I worked at Church on Fire, before I did anything, I was just uh, a little boy growing up on the west side of Cincinnati. Uh, when I was three years old, my mom and dad got divorced. 
Um, both of my parents did the best they could, and I'm so thankful. They're both wonderful. My dad's great. But my mom got custody, so I was with her most of the time. And it was not always perfect. No parent is perfect. I've got two daughters now. And I realize sometimes just make the best decision with what you have available. And uh, my mom did that. And she worked long hours and put up with a lot of craziness. And then she got remarried to my stepdad. And that was a journey and an adventure in and of itself. And um, life doesn't always go like you plan it to go. But I saw my mom show up. And as her son, I felt her love. I felt her confidence in me and her support in every single thing that I did. I didn't have a traditional background, our family and our uh, trajectory of our life was not always as you might write it in a storybook, but my mom's love was constant. Uh, she cherished uh, me as her son and then my little brother and little sister that we have now. And like I said, there was no such thing as perfection, but my mom's love was as perfect as it could be. I was so thankful to have the mom that I have now. And as I raise my own daughters and I see her as a grandmother and as a mother-in-law to my wife, I am undone with the woman that she is and the journey that she's been on. She's a business owner now and she started later in her life and she is not scared or afraid. She is faith-filled and it is an inspiration to me. And it's an inspiration to my wife and my little daughters have a tutu they look up to and they love. And a lot of people at this church know her and love her. So um, right now, and I'm excited or blessed, scared, honored to even be able to do this, but um, I'd like to invite my mom, Maria Lips, to come up on stage so that I can bless her. Sorry, Mom. She said, I don't like this. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can sit there. Ari, Reina, Samantha, will you come up here too? Hey, Mama. I love you. <sighs> Mama, we love you. You've had things spoken over you and you've had people abuse you and hurt you. You've fought for me and you fight for my wife and my daughters. And now I see you fight for other people down at the shop. I see you fight and I see the fight the devil brings to you. He's attacked your health, he's attacked your confidence, your faith, but you've stayed strong and that gives me strength. You went through Oh, I should say, I put you through <laughs> uh, our own version of Hades. And you never stopped loving me. As crazy as I was and as wild as I got, I remember you saying with more faith than maybe it felt that if you raised me up in the way I should go when I was older, I wouldn't depart. And now here we are. <laughs> Against all odds, you are a phenomenal mother in love and tutu to my daughters. And I know so many people here love you. And I bless you, mom. I bless your past that you've been through, but I bless your future that God's leading you into with confidence and faith. You're stepping out in faith and in an age where most people are starting to write their final chapters, you are beginning a story. And I'm so thankful to have a woman to look to who's not stopping or slowing down and I stand in agreement with what God is doing and what he's going to do through that shop and through your ministry. You have been hurt and abused and you are a place of oasis and restoration for others. And I'm so thankful. And I bless you, mom, as a son who has reaped the fruits of your sacrifices. I bless you, mom, and I love you. 